Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the chain rule, which is just another derivative rule that we can use to help us find some more derivatives. Specifically, we use chain rule when we have a composition of functions. I think it's called chain rule because you can think of like a chain of functions, but we use chain rule when we're finding the derivative of a composition. So let's say we're taking the derivative of k of x, which is f of g of x, the composition of f and g. Then the derivative is k prime of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. All right, so let's unpack this and make sure we know what's going on. First off, when we have f of g, the composition, I'm thinking of f as the outside function and g as the inside function. So I'm going to use outside and inside a lot when I'm talking about this. So f prime of g of x times g prime of x, that's like saying the derivative of the outside function, f prime, with the inside function left alone as the input. Then we multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. So we're still taking the derivative of both functions, both f and g, we're just combining them in the specific way set out by the rule. So I'm going to be bringing this back quite a few times while we're talking about the chain rule, where I have the derivative of the outside with the inside left alone times the derivative of the inside. All right, let's apply this to an example so we can see what it looks like. Let's say I have k of x is equal to x minus 3 quantity squared, and let's find the derivative k prime. So before I even try the chain rule, I just want to comment that we can do this without the chain rule. So if we can do it without the chain rule, I'm hoping that you'll see that derivative and be able to compare it to the chain rule derivative and feel confident that they're doing the same thing. So if we just distribute out x minus 3 times x minus 3, we're going to get something we can take the derivative of. So if we rewrite k, x minus 3 times x minus 3, and we distribute, I'm getting x squared minus 6x plus 9. Then this is just a polynomial. We can do the derivative of it using power rule. So we get 2x minus 6 as our derivative. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of negative 6x is negative 6. Derivative of 9 is 0. So we have that the derivative of k is 2x minus 6. Not everything's going to be this easy, I will show you why later in the video, but for right now I just want to show you sometimes we can do this without chain rule, but chain rule should give us the same answer. So let's try out our chain rule on this function and make sure we're getting the same derivative. So as I mentioned, when I'm doing chain rule, I like to make sure I know which function is the inside function and which function is the outside function. So this can take a little bit of practice, but I'm hoping that with some time you can feel really confident with it. So here we have something squared, and that something is x minus 3. So I'm thinking the inside function is x minus 3, and the outside function is x squared. You can check this for yourself by thinking, okay, the outside function is something squared, and then we're going to put our inside function as that something. So x minus 3 squared, that is the composition of the inside and the outside function. I'm getting the function we started with, x minus 3 squared. So in our formula where we're writing it as f of g of x, g is the inside function and f is the outside function. And again, anytime you want, you can check this for yourself by composing the functions f of g of x, write it out, make sure it's working the way you want it to. I have f of g, g is x minus 3. Then what f does is it squares the thing, the input, so it's taking x minus 3 and squaring it. And that gets us the function we started with, our function k. So, all right, we feel good. We've identified the inside function and the outside function. Let's go ahead and find the derivative. So chain rule tells us that the derivative of k, k prime of x, is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So we're going to need the derivatives of f and g. Let's go ahead and find those. The derivative of g is just 1, and the derivative of f is 2x. So we have our information. We can put it into the equation, the formula for the chain rule. Okay, so I do this in steps just to really make sure we're understanding what's happening here. I'm going to do f prime of g, g is x minus 3. Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of g, that's 1. Then I'm going to do f prime of x minus 3. f prime does 2 times the thing, so 2 times the input. So here I just have 2 times x minus 3. Then I can distribute and get 2x minus 6. And this is what we had gotten for our derivative previously, without the chain rule. 
So using this process, we get the same answer. And this means we have successfully taken our first derivative using the chain rule. You can always do this inside an outside function step where you write it all out. Then you do the formula directly where it's f prime of g times g prime. I sometimes like to do this in a little bit of a simpler way that is sometimes shorter. So every time I do a chain rule example, I will also show you it in a sort of shorter version. So if we think about the derivative, I'm going to remember that we have the derivative of the outside with the inside left alone times the derivative of the inside. So if I'm thinking my outside function is x squared, the derivative of that would take the 2 down in front, it would leave the inside alone, and it would decrease the power by 1. That's using power rule. Then I would multiply by the derivative of the inside function, the derivative of x minus 3. Now I'm just left to simplify this. The derivative of x minus 3 is 1. Then 1 times anything is just itself, so I really just have 2 times x minus 3. I can distribute this and I get 2x minus 6, and this is the same result that we computed both of the other ways. Again, this is still the chain rule, it's just a shorter, more faster way to write it that you can really start to use once you've become more comfortable with chain rule and you don't need to write out all of the steps about the inside and the outside function. Okay, so in that example we didn't really need chain rule, but trust me, you're going to be really happy we have chain rule, and let me show you why. So in this example, let's say that we have k of x, and this time it's x minus 3 raised to the fifth power. So instead of squared like the last example, we have to the fifth power. And we're going to find the derivative k prime. So we could do this without the chain rule, but it's going to take us a while. We could simplify x minus 3 quantity to the fifth power by writing it out five times and then distributing all of the terms out. We'd get x to the fifth plus some stuff. There'd be a lot of terms going on. This would take us a long time. So chain rule lets us find the derivative much more quickly, so it's much faster to do it this way. Okay, so with chain rule, we have an inside function and an outside function. Remember, it's f of g, so g is the inside function and f is the outside function. Here I'm seeing that we have something raised to the fifth power. So that something is our inside function, our g, so x minus 3 is g, and then the outside function is something to the fifth, or x to the fifth. So that's our f function, our outside function. Now I know I'm going to need both of their derivatives, so I'm just going to go ahead and take these right now. The derivative of g is 1, and the derivative of f, the derivative of x to the fifth, is 5x to the fourth, using the power rule. So now I have all of my information, I just need to assemble it using the chain rule. So the chain rule says that k prime of x is equal to f prime of g of x, times g prime of x. So I'm going to work on the g functions first. So f prime of g, that's x minus 3, times the derivative of g, which is 1. Then I look at what f prime does. f prime is 5 times something to the fourth power, so that's going to be 5 times x minus 3, that's my input, to the fourth power. Knowing how to compose functions pretty confidently is really going to help you out here. So again, I have 5 times x minus 3 to the 4th times 1, multiplying by 1 leaves the function as it is, so this is my derivative. I would say that was a lot faster than trying to distribute out x minus 3 multiplied by itself 5 times. That would be a lot of math to do just to get us to something that we could take the derivative of. Instead, we can use chain rule. So once you feel more comfortable with chain rule, you could do this in even a faster way by remembering that the derivative is equal to the derivative of the outside function with the inside function left alone times the derivative of the inside function. So here we have something to the fifth, that five will come down in front, we decrease the power by one, leaving the inside left alone, then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, the derivative of x minus three. Now we just have to simplify, so we have the derivative of x minus 3, that's just 1, and 1 times anything is itself, so I'm left with 5 times x minus 3 to the 4th as my derivative. Alright, so as you're learning this, just give yourself some time to get comfortable with the inside and the outside function. I know for me, I really had to write out the inside and the outside every single time when I was first learning this and do all of the steps, but now that I've done chain rule quite a few times, I can jump to the shorter version and do this without having to write out all the steps. You do what's comfortable for you and just know you'll get here eventually if you're not here right away. 
All right, well, that's it for this video. We just did two examples here just to really get used to the chain rule. The next video is going to just run you through a bunch of chain rule examples so you can see what this looks like in practice. We're just gonna practice this over and over again. Awesome, well, thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.